congregation. So they have 44 different places to go. They've gone to about 30 so far. When they go, let's take the example of Guatemala. They have a contingent of Guatemalans. When they go to Guatemala, they are led by the Guatemalans. They do the planning. They are the experts. They know how to speak the language. They know what food to eat, what to avoid. They know where to go. So what happens is, and this is why the pastor does this, in the context of the U.S., these Guatemalans are poor, uneducated, don't speak English well, uh, they're mowing lawns, they're cleaning houses. When they go there, a new context, the people that are in control in the U.S. suddenly are completely dependent on the Guatemalans, who know all the stuff there is to know about that culture. So they learn that our position on Earth is contextual. It just depends on where we happen to be at the time. There's nothing innate about it. So why do we need multi-ethnic, multi-racial churches? And I'm sorry to put my own name on there, but we were asked... <laughs> <laughs> this comes from... Uh, we had the first ever uh, multi-ethnic church conference in San Diego in November, and we were asked to write this be our vision. And this is what I said. In a nation with an unjust racial order, we need congregations that challenge that order. This is our God of justice. In a world of division, we need congregations that reflect oneness. This is our God of unity. I don't know about you, but ultimately, I want our tent back. We need the protective covering of Jesus Christ by doing the authentic church that Jesus taught us about. And by the way, if you want to, do a study of the first church and watch the model that they develop. What they develop is stunning for that time. Stunning multi ethnic churches. Nobody did that. That's what was different about Christianity. Every other religion was a religion of a people. So here's the challenge. You're a leadership. I'm so excited to come to talk to you because of who you represent. Because I've got a challenge for you. Turn away, go upside down. And I'm going to talk about how I would suggest a few ways to do that. Henry Ford had this great quote. If I asked my customers what they wanted, they would have said a faster horse. <laughs> okay. You all know what he invented, right? Or what he mass-produced and made himself wealthy on. Leadership is not asking people what they want. <coughs> Leadership is envisioning and implementing a better future. That's leadership. So many of our so-called leaders today are taking opinion polls and that's what they believe. That's not what it's about. Here's some ways that we could have churches right here in Waco become multiracial. There are really only five basic ways. And these are them. This is the most common and the least successful. I already have a church. I'm in a church. I get excited about this issue. I'm going to try to get other people to come to my church that are of different racial groups. That's hard because you may be excited about it. But you have, A, have to get everybody else excited in your church, or at least your leadership, and then B, somehow make contact with people up that aren't in your congregation and get them excited enough to come and try. It can happen, it's hard. Member exchange. I'm going to ask you a little bit later because that's actually going on here. Where churches can say, look, and this is part of the way that Willow Creek Church up in Chicago did. If there are already 15,000 members, what they did was they found an African American church of 15,000 members. And they partnered together. And they found 100 in each congregation that were most committed to diversity and being going across racial group. And they sent 100 African Americans out to Willow Creek and 100 white Anglos to uh, Salem Baptist in Chicago. And that was the start of what they did. That's something very exchange. Merger. Merge two or more different racial congregations together. I actually just finished being on a PhD dissertation where a pastor who had done this did a study of the five churches or so that he knew had done it, had, had done this, and found out what makes it successful and what not. That's another way to do it. Begin a new congregation. And that's actually, there's a denomination called the uh, Evangelical Covenant Church of America. It's headquartered up in Chicago. And they are by far the most successful denomination in having multiracial congregations because 10 years ago they made it their goal that they will be at least 20% of their congregations will be at least 
diverse? Why not? And they've done it. And their plan was by church planning. That's the best way to grow and expand, start new churches that from day one are multiracial. And this one. Leave your own church and go to one filled with people of a different race. Or if you're in the process of finding a church, say, I'm going to go to one where I'm not a majority. That's what my family and I did starting 15 years ago. It was immensely uncomfortable at first. And a lot of times people have a honeymoon period where it's kind of fun for a little while and then they move on. But because we're committed to it for the long haul, it started being, we went past the honeymoon period. And we started being uncomfortable and difficult until we started learning how to be more than monocultural, which is the way we grew up. My wife and I are from this little town up in central Minnesota. Couldn't get more monocultural. So much so, it isn't even white. Everybody is Scandinavian. Okay? So just to meet like a German or something like that, that was all. Okay, last couple slides. Just to put a context here. Look at Waco. Waco's growing. The brand new census data is out. There were less than 115,000 people living in Waco proper, and now there are 125,000 people. In fact, the whole metro, we're seeing this growth. About 1% per year, 10% per decade here in the Waco metropolitan area. Racial composition, as it's happening all over Texas, is changing. You no longer, as of 2010, have a majority group here in Waco. Whites were barely the majority back in 2000. They are no, no longer that, 46%. About a fifth of the people here in Waco are African American. 30% now Hispanic. Asian is pretty small, growing is ever so slightly. There is diversity here. Hey, yeah, that's me. <laughs> This is great. So I speak to places that are 98% one group and 2% the other. It was just up in Wisconsin. You heard of the University of Wisconsin? Great university, but man, that town is not diverse. It's a lot more difficult to do to get together because there just isn't much diversity. So, final slide.